Today we are taking a look at the Vanguard class Deep Space Interceptor responsible for bringing the Autobots and Decepticons to Earth in the G1 cartoon, The Autobot Arc. And before we get into the review, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you can be alerted to the latest reviews, news, and episodes when they drop. Hey everyone, welcome back to Toy Habits, and today we are taking a detailed look at the Titan class Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Autobot arc and doing a full transformation into robot mode, as well as taking an up close and personal look at Teletrend 1 and Mainframe, so let's get right to it. And let's start off like we usually do by taking a look at the box and the Autobot arc comes in the Transformers Kingdom War for Cybertron trilogy box and you can see an amazing photo of the Autobot arc in robot mode grasping Megatron in the palm of his hands squeezing the life out of him and I love this illustration it's a very prehistoric look and you can also see the Autobot arc crashed into the side of the volcano like it did in the G1 cartoon and you can also see the image bleeding over to the side of the box which is cool. You also see some pterodactyls in the background here and on the front of the box here as well. And looking at the side of the box you can see this amazing illustration of the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom art here and it has a array of Decepticons and Autobots and it is the same art that appears on the sides of the boxes for the smaller figures it's just in a much larger scale. And on the top of the box, you see Air Razor taking flight to intercept the Nemesis, which is the flagship of the Decepticons. And you can also see Starscream in his jet mode taking off to intercept Air Razor. And you can also see another Decepticon falling out of the Nemesis, possibly hurtling to his demise. And finally, taking a look at the back of the box, you can see the arc in its robot mode it's spaceship mode, and you can also see mainframe as well as Teletran 1 and the other cool stuff that this particular set comes with. And you can also see some of the features that we will see once we crack this open, and I cannot wait. And what I've done here is slid the arc out from the display box just to show you what you have to deal with here when you open it. So we have some blast effects that are up here that are just loose in the package, which is nice because you don't have to separate them from any ties or open them from a bag. You also have these plastic tie downs that are around the arc, but I don't see very many of them. So there's probably not a ton to clip there. You also have the instructions down here as well. And what you do see is the little scaled figure of Optimus Prime that you can place inside the arc once we get it out of the box. And it does come with a collectible card that is the Black Arachnia card from the Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Netflix series. And as I was sliding this out of the box, I wanted to show you that you do have a couple pieces to assemble that are hidden in this cardboard piece here, but you don't really have anything hidden in here. It just houses the rear engines just for shipping purposes so it doesn't knock around and get broken. And now that we have the arc out of the box, we can show how massive the scale is in its ship mode. And I've included Cliff Jumper down here just to give you some representation of the scale with a smaller Autobot. So, like I said, this is massive. It is 18 inches from back to front. And from the widest parts, it is about 14 inches across. And it'll be a little wider because you have to fit these panels on, which were the parts that were unassembled that I showed you earlier in the review that were in the cardboard box. Now the side panels are pretty straightforward to put on and they have tabs and little guides that you can use to line everything up and they do match up with the rear of the ship here. But I found that the easiest thing to do was just put your thumb underneath here and there is a tab on the bottom here that you can line up with the bottom underneath the ship. And so I found that if you just line that up, you can just work the side panel over here and just kind of stretch it a little bit and just shimmy it on and then it should snap into place and voila there you go and then you could just use your other hand to just slide everything else in there just to make it sure that it is all fitting nice and tight and here we have the view from the other side so you just perform the same process just lining that bottom tab up and just shimming it on like so and everything should snap into place 
and just with a little force you can get everything nice on that side as well and now that this thing is mostly assembled and i say mostly because it does come with a scaled optimus prime that you're going to have to put in the arc and i just wanted to zero in on this real quick because it's very very tiny and you really can't make out the details with your eyes, so hopefully the camera can make out the details for you. But here's Optimus Prime, and we will show you where it goes in and how it looks in a minute. And first off, you'll notice all of these little black turrets that are lining the arc around the perimeter here. And these turrets are non-movable. They're pretty much sculpted on, but they actually look really cool and they just give a lot of dimension to this arc. And you'll find a lot of intricate sculpting detail all around this arc. And let's show you just some of the examples here. First, we have the front of the arc where we have the main cockpit and you can see all of the sculpting detail that you can see in the front of it. Now, I don't know why this is a lighter shade of orange, but it almost looks like a shade of yellow. It's a very different color than the rest of the arc, and I don't know if they just used a different color that day when they were producing this particular part, but mine has a different color for the front of it. So yours may vary, who knows? Quality control issues aside, the arc is very, very cool. And we can also see some more details here with the Autobot symbols and all of just the intricate detail that they have on the arc, including the centerpiece, which you can pull the front of it up and reveal the inside of it where Optimus Prime goes. And that little plastic piece that just popped off is something that I'm gonna show you because it's a really a pain in the butt. Now you might not have seen this little plastic piece pop off, but it's just a piece of side molding here that just affixes to this piece right here. And there's a small tab underneath it that hooks on to the bottom of the arc. And what happens here is this little tab clips in here, but if you forget to lift it up on both sides and then lift this piece up, it's going to pop off. So I've done that several times, so that's why I called it a pain in the butt. But if you realize that you need to do that, you won't have that problem. Now, once you have this piece popped open, you reveal this very cool command deck that you can see here. And basically what this is, is Teletran 1 and Mainframe. And it's really cool because Teletran 1's details actually double as interior detail for the arc. So that's really cool. So we're gonna pop Optimus Prime in here just to show you how it fits in and how it looks. And it's really cool because this is a scaled version of Optimus Prime. So you can imagine how massively large this particular arc is. And you can see the navigator globe in the middle there. And I just think the attention to detail on this thing is just absolutely amazing. And while we're under the hood, so to speak, you can actually remove mainframe pretty easily. You just slide him out and it basically reveals this hollow hole that if you have core class figures, you can place them in there. But I don't think this was really intended for a core class figure, but you can sit them in there. Some of the other cool things that you'll find on the interior of this thing are some white Autobot symbols, which is a nice surprise. And I'm sure that it is something that deals with the transformation into robot mode just to give the robot some more detail there. And what we'll do now is we'll just close this back up and we're going to flip this sucker around just to reveal the landing gear on the bottom. And so this landing gear you can retract and open pretty easily. And it's basically just three rectangular pieces that act as landing gear here. And if you turn it over, you can sit it up and the arc sits a lot higher off the ground than where I had it. And if we also flip this around, around you can also see the back of the arc and it's very cool that the way that they've designed these engines here it's a very cool paint app where it kind of bleeds from a very light blue to a very dark blue making it look like the engines are operating and once we're back here we can also take a look at the ramp and the ramp operates by this little button here and if you push that it should pop down and the cool part is that this ramp operates on pistons so we can take a closer look at that 
and check out how it works. And these pistons are really cool because they do move up and down. There's not a ton of space in this hole right here, so you really can't fit any of the figures. But for transformation, these things split. So you just want to make sure that these are connected and you can raise and lower the arc and just click it into place and you have your ramp back into place again. And what we can do from here is just flip this whole thing over again and oops, I just popped the pistons out and the ramp, but we can easily click that back in. You can retract the landing gear very easily and you can just see some more of the detail that we have on the underneath of it. You can see some more turrets and also some more sculpting detail and intricate detail that you can find on the bottom of the arc. And circling back to Teletran 1 and mainframe, it operates as a command deck for the Autobots when it's in its ship mode. And you can see that there are some more hollow places here. And if you had the HasLab Unicron, you can also fit Galvatron and Rodimus Prime in those little hollow spaces there. So I think that's pretty cool. So let's show you how to transform this sucker into Teletran 1 and Mainframe right now. Now for transforming mainframe, you can leave Optimus Prime and the Navigator Globe in there because they are detachable and they are very tiny and you might lose them and transforming mainframe doesn't actually hinder these pieces staying in place. So to start, what you can do is detach the legs from the tabs here and you can just fold them out. And what you need to do next is just rotate the midsection around. And what you'll need to do next is just unhinge these little side panels here and what you can do is rotate these feet forward but sometimes these pop off and you just kind of have to close them in place here and just lock them in and you repeat the same process on the other side you just rotate the foot around and this becomes a very stable base for mainframe and that locks into place and if you notice his arms are up here, so you just kind of unclip them from the little torso side here, and you do that on the other side as well. And you can raise these up, and what you'll need to do is just hinge this part forward, and it just basically reveals the head where you can uh, make sure that you uh, pop it out, and you can rotate that around. And basically what you'll need to do next is just take this piece and just pop it up here and just lock it into place and it clips in really easily. And what you can do next is just take the arms, rotate this little panel here and fold the fists out and just rotate that back. And you do the same on the other side with the other hand, rotate the fists out and you can close this panel and voila you have mainframe and he actually looks really really cool so let's take an up close and personal look and now that mainframe is transformed you can see the very cool detail that you have here you have this very cool autobot symbol what looks like to be a fan or just some systems here in front and you also see some of the details here on the legs and i think this figure looks really really great from the front but you do have that command deck that's just hanging off the back which is okay but you'll probably be displaying this figure from the front so you probably won't see it anyway and i do really love the head sculpt it's a very cool one and it's very unique and it does have that piece of translucent plastic in the back so it actually lets light in and you can kind of see his eyes come alive here and it just creates a really cool effect. Next up let's transform mainframe into Teletran 1. Now to transform this guy into Trellitran 1, you're kind of do some reverse steps that you did before. So you're just going to want to unhook this and you can see that my Sky Spy has fallen out already when you don't actually really need it for transformation. So you can just kind of remove this already. But um, what you're going to need to do is just fold his head down and what you can do is just clip that back into place here. And then what you're going to do is rotate the midsection around so the legs are facing like so. And what then you can do is just take these tabs out and just put them outstretched like this. And what you want to do is rotate the foot around so you have the gray pieces that are showing in front. And you want to do the same thing with the other side. So just tab that out and put that gray piece in front there. And what this really does is create this situation where you have this tab and this slot. And what you do is just tab that in there and you can start to see this kind of take shape. 
And from here, what you're going to do is just bend him forward. And what these will do is these tabs will tab into place right here. So um, just lock those into place and then you can raise the arms up here and you can begin to take these panels out like so. And you'll notice that there are two discs in the back here, which you can just take out, which we'll take a look at in a second. And while we're back here, what happens here is you move these little panels up here and those lock into place up here and which kind of creates the deck that you'll find in front of Teletran 1 and just make sure that these tabs right here are underneath these little sections here. And if you flip this around, you can actually really start to see this take shape now. And we're coming down the home stretch with Teletran 1. So what you're gonna do is just unhinge the arms here and then, oops, so what you're gonna to find too is some of these mushroom pegs are really, really loose. And I'm actually surprised that I haven't run into this until now, but you're just gonna to wanna to unhinge these parts here and rotate the arms around. And you'll see that there are some tabs here that just fit in to these slots. So just line everything up very nicely and put them into place. And you'll also wanna do that on the other side as well. And if I can get these lined up, we can move on to the fits and finishes when you are finished transforming this guy. And wow, I'm having a really hard time with this guy. So your mileage may vary, but this is really, really hard for me to line up on camera at the moment. So I'm just going to hit the pause button and I will be right back. And I'm back and I figured out the problem. I did not hinge this up appropriately. And what I'm gonna do now is just rotate this back around and this should all lock into place now. Okay. And when you're finished with that, all you need to do is just put these fists and tuck them in here and do the same on the other side. And you now have a beautiful Teletran 1 that we can take a closer look at the details now. And what I'll do now is just bring in Red Alert for a size comparison here. And you can actually see that Red Alert and the scale of Teletran 1 look really, really good together. So let's just take a closer look at the details here. Now they did an amazing job with the paneling here and just making this as detailed as they can. And all of the 3D printed stickers are fantastic. And you can see that there is the matrix of leadership. There's a map of the earth. We have the lost Autobot here as well as the arc and some just really, really cool details on Teletran 1. And we finally get a Teletran 1 after, gosh, how many years, right? And taking a closer look at Sky Spy, you can just see some of the detail here, the paneling, and this is actually a really detailed piece for how tiny this is. And you'll also notice that you have some gold discs that come with Teletran 1, and you can see that it says Sounds of Earth on the back, which looks like a record, and you have some really cool details and some symbols on the back here, which look really, really nice, and they're painted in a nice metallic gold. All right, now let's get into the transformation of the arc into Autobot robot mode. And what you're gonna need to do first is just flip this guy around and just make sure that these little tabs here are unhooked. Because if you remember in the beginning, those little these little panels popped off and they were really a pain in the butt to deal with. And so there's just one side that's really sticky on mine. So just make sure that those are loose. And what you'll be able to do now is just lift this front piece forward without those tabs falling out. And so what you'll need to do here is just push these tabs in and they will go into place here. And then you can just kind of fold them in and they will lock into place. And once these smaller pieces are tabbed into place, you're gonna to wanna to take these orange pieces here, rotate them up like so, and then just fold this piece right into the torso here. And then all you can do is just lower this down. And then what you'll need to do is flip this guy over. And what you'll see down here is the nose cone that has a very large hole for it to tab into this piece right here. So what you do is just detach the nose cone here, bring it forward, tab it in, and you'll also notice that there are some tabs here that'll tab into this little slot down on the bottom here. So just clip that in like so. 
and now that these are tabbed in you can flip this around again and what you'll need to do is just bring this piece forward up over his head and we're going to move on to the arms next and what you'll notice is that there are some tabs here and this little tab here will lock into place and also this tab here will lock into place in here so what you're going to need to do is just raise this arm up forward and that'll lock into place and then what you'll need to do is just bring this all the way straight down until you hear it tab into place and you might take a little bit of finagling here to get this into place because all of these things have to line up right so and here we go once you hear that click you are good to go and you can move on to the next side and flipping this guy around we can repeat the same process on the other side so just hinge this up that'll lock into place and then you just move this down and hopefully you will hear that click Ooh, that was a rather large click and then from here what I recommend is just turning this all the way around at the torso so you can start to transform the legs and once this whole thing is flipped around you can then flip this whole thing over and if you noticed in the beginning of my video I actually did not have this piece from the tail raised up. So what happens here is you just open this trap door and you can hide this tail piece down in the little bay here and this close this up. And then what you'll need to do is just flip this over again and basically separate the legs. And what you wanna do is just ratchet this whole thing out. And what this does is this rotates around to this side like so. And then you're just gonna do the other leg piece here like so and you're just going to flip these around and you're going to close the legs right there so what we're doing here is just providing the really nice base and the really sturdy legs for the autobot arc to stand on in robot mode and if you notice too there are also some feet that you'll need to put out and they have little tabs that will go in here so all you need to do is just take this out tab those in and you can hear them lock into place and you do this again with the other foot and now you can stand this sucker up and now that we have this guy standing up we can deal with his torso and what you'll notice here is that there are some tabs up here that will lock into place and there's a tab here that fits into the slot up here and you'll also see very same one on the other side and also you have some tabs here that will lock into place with the sections up here so all you do is just lower this guy down and you just tab this into place and just give it a firm squeeze and he should settle right in and next what you want to do is work on the hands and for this one it's actually really really cool because the hands are one piece and they're kind of on rollers here and ratchets and if you notice when you start to bring out the hands there is this piece here that will just kind of auto lock into place and you can kind of see it moving down and it's actually got some really amazing detail on the inside here it's very intricately sculpted and it just looks very cool and then what you can then do now is just ratchet this down here so the Autobot symbol is facing forward and you can also just ratchet this down here as well. And you can also take a look at this other side when you bring the hand out, you can kind of see all of the mechanisms kind of coming into place when you're putting out the hand, which is really, really cool on the other side as well. And then from here, you're pretty much down the home stretch and all you need to do here is just start to separate the arms here and just ratchet these out and down and then you just rotate them and you rotate the arms and just get the thumbs and the fingers separated and you do the same on the other side as well and you can just basically click these out ratchet them down rotate them and rotate the hands and you are pretty much almost done and now that transformation is complete you can just kind of put the finishing touches on here so my head was a little bit tilted to the side so i'm just going to put that forward and what you can do now is just put the hands how you want them and you can just kind of ratchet everything into place here and just to get it quite right so now that he is fully transformed let's take a look at the details now saying that this robot mode is massive is an understatement and what I'm going to do is just throw red alert in here just for a size comparison and you can see that the arc in robot mode just towers over red alert and it takes about four red alerts to equal the height of the arc in robot mode. 
And taking a closer look at this head sculpt, we can see some really nice details. Now this is on a swivel joint and it's not on a ball joint, but I think it serves this purpose. And you can see some really cool neck detail here and you get a really nice mix of colors and you have some gunmetal gray paint app, which is a lot shinier than the matte grays that you'll find on the top of his head. And you'll also see um, some mixes of yellow here that really set off his neck piece there. So really cool sculpt for his head, really cool attention to detail. And you could even see the red eyes underneath the gray eyebrow. And what we're going to do now just to wrap up the review on the arc in robot mode is just focus on some of the things that you couldn't see while it was in ship modes. So for example, for some of the arms, they have some sculpted detail here in these gray parts. And if you take a look at the hands, we can see some more detail here. And the hands are not super articulated, so they are just closed off and just stuck together with these four digits here. And really only the thumb moves and this hand moves, but it also rotates back and forth, which you can hear very loudly. And as we move down the front, you can see that the rear engines are now the fronts of the legs, which actually give it a really cool look in robot mode and just make it a look a lot more interesting than just yellow panels that are covering those engines. And now that I've turned this around, you can also see some of the details in the back of the legs. So what you really don't see in ship mode is the panels that are back here that are super detailed. And if we move up the arc, you can also see some of the leg detail here. You can also see those really, really loud ratchet joints and some of the fits and finishes that you'll find on the back of the figure. But my guess is that you will not be seeing this part because you'll probably either be displaying him in ship mode or in front in robot mode. And one last thing to note here, and if you take a look at the back here, you do see a translucent piece of plastic that lets light in so it can make his eyes look alive and become red, and it just gives a really cool effect to the figure. I'm quite impressed with the Autobot arc and when it's all said and done, the transformation was quite easy and the fits and finishes on the arc are very well done and it's really great to finally get a proper arc and Teletran 1 to the collection. We'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below, so sound off, sub the channel so you can keep up with the latest news and reviews, and thanks for tuning into Toy Habits.